Isabella Myrtle and Raul Lopez had been patient, slowly and methodically building capital so that they could finally realize Maggie's and now their dream of building the ultimate vacation destination on Palma de Fuego. The road to get here was challenging. Many years ago, when the opportunity to purchase the island came up, the couple had to partner with Raul's brothers, Sebastian and Mateo, to purchase the island. And as a part of this agreement, Isabella and Raul agreed to assist in the development of Playa de Matero before pursuing their own development. But this may have been for the best, because the couple was able to use the money they earned to form Myrtle Resorts. Myrtle Resorts has become highly successful and highly profitable, and given the couple the capital and experience they need to begin construction of the crown jewel of their empire, a massive hotel complex on Palma de Fuego. But they can't just throw shovels in the ground to get to work. This project is going to require massive amounts of public infrastructure before it can get off the ground. Isabella leverages her connections with the Palma de Fuego town board to request financial assistance with building the public infrastructure associated with the site. She paints a picture of a district that would serve millions of tourists annually and have amazing attractions including replicas of the Statue of Liberty and the Eiffel Tower. The district would have abundant parks and open space, all of which would be privately owned, which would mean no maintenance costs for the town. And she offers Lopez Brothers construction to build all the roads, utility infrastructure, and city service buildings at cost. And finally, she promises not to incorporate her land into a new or existing municipality, meaning that the town can count on the revenue now and into the future. The board says the deal seems too good to be true and quickly accepts. Perhaps it is too good to be true. Time will tell. So in today's episode, we're going to begin work on this area. We'll construct the regional transportation network, including a new ring road, an improved tunnel to the area, and a metro station. Then we'll lay out portions of the local transportation network, which, for better or for worse, will take inspiration from Las Vegas, focusing on pumping cars to and through the area while providing separate pedestrian-only roads for the pedestrian traffic in the area. We'll then begin construction of the new Myrtle Resorts hotels, a few attractions, a small city services campus, and finish up with a few blocks of zoned buildings. And if you're excited to finally start building the tourism district, hit the like button. And if you wish we were working on something else, hit the like button for that too, and let me know what kinds of projects you'd like to see next. Or just drop an emoji that reminds you of tourism for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Palma de Fuego in Verde Beach. And this is going to be a good one because we're finally getting started on building on this side of the island. And I know this is something that many of you have been asking about for a long time, and we've held this back for good reason. This is going to be a very large build. We're going to be doing a lot here. Lots of density, lots of transportation, lots of unique buildings, lots of everything. And I couldn't be happier that we're starting this after the Hotels and Retreats DLC because reasonably, that is exactly what this build needs. So let's kick this off by building our regional transportation network. Building the regional transportation network really comes down to three things. Number one, completing our ring road. Number two, finishing the tunnel through the island. And then number three, extending metro service to this area. So the ring road already is stubbed in right here and over here. So it's really just connecting this up with a highway. And then we've already got a tunnel here. This tunnel's really bad, so we're going to redo it. And then once we've completed all of that, we will start on our metro. The metro is going to be an interesting one because we do have a metro over here in Playa de Matero. But if you'll recall, this metro doesn't actually go downtown. This metro goes out to Myrtle Gardens rather than going downtown. So we're likely going to tunnel in another line as well. But let's begin with our ring road. And we are going to try to respect our topography with the road itself. We're going to be pushing a lot of soil around today pushing this back, pulling this towards the sea. And I'm gonna do something that's gonna be controversial and that is really kind of ignore the beach. This is not about beach. It's about being on the island, obviously. And it's also about having the views of the water from the hotel room, but the water here is not really gonna be usable. There we go. And this looks very unnatural and that's because it is. <laughs> We, we are going to be controlling everything just like in Las Vegas. And we're going to begin by building our road along the coast. All of our planning roads will be done in gravel. They're inexpensive. They're easy to work with. They give us guidelines. This is going to be a highway, but if I were to use the highways, I wouldn't have any guides. And that's no good. I want this road to be completely straight. And then to formalize the boundary, I am going to draw a road right up the side. We'll bring that up a thousand over here. And then on the other side, we're going to do the exact same thing. And this will be what we use to figure out the exact center of this area. And I do want to figure out the center because we are going to run that straight to our tunnel. 
So if this is $4,060 across, 430 should be our midpoint. And then we'll send this up here. Eventually, we are going to make that connection across, but we have what we need here. Now the trick is going to be getting this road connected up over here. So the very first thing I want to do, I'm going to grab the tool I'll be using, the medium brush. I'm going to use the medium brush to carve into the hillside. And we're going to do that because we're going to use a four lane highway to get over here. And that is what's going to run along the coast. We need to know how high we're going up here. So I'd love to keep this in this general area. So I'm going to follow this contour line to see exactly where it goes. And oh my goodness, it looks like these two roads are at basically the exact same contour line right now. So as long as I carve up and in, we shouldn't have to change our elevation at all. And I'm filling in a bit. That's not what I wanted to do, but it's vanilla. There's not a lot that we could do to resolve it. And now we should be able to use the curved road tool and then we'll make our connections and it'll be nice and smooth. That is perfect. And now I'll be honest with you, I'm tempted to clean up all of the terrain stuff right now. But if I do that, when I go to upgrade the road, I'll have new problems. So we're going to upgrade the road right away. The reason why we're using a highway is simply the distance between things. So this is going to be an attraction that draws people regionally and outside of the area. And to get here it's so far away, I think that we need to have this. I do think down the line there could be value in adding some sort of off street bicycle facility, making this a scenic route, but that is not the focus right now. And reasonably, there aren't really any destinations out here. And we're heading towards a recycling center and a cargo harbor. So I don't know that, that it would make a ton of sense to do that just yet. And now before we do all of our great, we'll do the, all of that at once. We'll fix all these up at, at the same time. I want to get over here now. A bit of context. Look at what we're working with. <laughs> this is going straight into a hill. We are going to use a two lane road here, and I think we're going to terminate this four lane road maybe right here perhaps right here because this is going to be the center of our district. So maybe we'll drop to a two lane highway right here. We're going to respect our topography to begin. We'll right mouse click here and basically make enough space for ourselves not to build on the beach. And then we'll follow our contour lines. And now here's where things are going to start to get challenging. You see that we're basically blasting into the hillside here and we want to stay off the beach. So there's going to be a lot of cutting here and that's OK. I think it's about time that we start our decline. I'm going to pick a spot where I want this to be lower. And now I'm going to once again use the slope terrain tool, right mouse click at our top height and then try to work up towards this area. Honestly, that's not all that bad. I thought it was going to be much worse. So now from here, we've got to make our way down probably another 20 meters. I've got an idea about this. So we're going to make a pad here and then I want to bridge over. And we're going to elevate on the bridge and I want to get it to about here. So that's a bit more decline. We'll right mouse click up here and wrap this around. Oh, that is a nice connection. So, uh, you know, we are working with the terrain. We're not completely showing it who's boss. And I think that this is going to be a really nice connection. We're going to blast that away. That was our, our placeholder. And now we're going to freeform the rest of this. And then we finished off with a little bit of the curved road tool. And I'm just going to be completely blunt with you. This turned out way better than I thought it was going to. We are going to upgrade this all the way through here. And there we go. We've got this all set. Now what I want to do is figure out how to get rid of all these lumpies and bumpies. And I'm going to give you the general gist of what I'm going to do. And then I will take care of this quickly. So what we're going to do is grab the height of the road, right mouse click here using our level terrain tool and then pull it up a little bit beyond the side of the road. And the places where this is most important are places like this where we really are starting to encroach a bit. That's where we got to pull it out. And now that we have this, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side to demonstrate this whole deal. And then we'll go into our softened terrain tool and we're going to use our largest brush size. And here's where I say, if, if you're very comfortable with this tool, go completely all the way, max strength, max speed through here. If you are not as confident and you want this to look nice, take it down and be patient. For me, I am fairly confident with this tool, so I will do max strength. I'm using my left mouse button. And the trick here is to try to stay off from the road. 
So if you stay off from the road and your your landscaping has enough space that you can stay off from the road, you can slope this really nicely without having any of those weird tearing lines. And it might take a while. This isn't a fast process, but it will look really good after you give it a couple seconds per spot all the way through. For me, I like to hit this until that dark spot is gone. And I just, I don't like the way that this particular theme handles hillsides. I think it looks bad. So I just do this. And after doing a ton of terraforming, here's what we have. Really, really nice slopes along the hillside. I did clean things up with landscaping as well. There were some trees that were just kind of randomly popping out of the sand, got rid of those. And generally, I think we're looking pretty good. There might be a couple of spots where things can be improved, but I think we might save some of that for a stream. Generally, I really, really like how this is working. And it's carrying a lot of traffic already, which is a little bit of a surprise to me. I thought it would carry some, but not what it is already carrying. Now we're gonna run this highway once more straight through here. And what we wanna do is create a really nice connection to Playa de Matero. The connection we have right now is no good. You can see that it's not lining up in the correct location. And I'm guessing that the height doesn't make all that much sense either. So to check that, I'm going to turn the contours back on and I wanna steal this height. Cause this is, I'd really love to keep whatever height this is and have it pop out in about the same spot over here. And what we have is pretty terrible. <laughs> what we have right now is a height where we're actually popping out above where it is on the other side. So that is not exactly helpful. I'm gonna slope up to this. And what I want this to be is about 20 meters. So I'll draw a line that's 20 meters long. This is just my guide. And then I'll right mouse click up here, left down here and slope up towards that spot. For this one, I think I am gonna use this four lane road. I'm gonna use that because I think it will be difficult to actually make the connections that I wanna make without using a road that is about the same. And then we'll upgrade this to a highway or downgrade it depending on how you look at it once we have this in place. Now let's pop underground and get rid of this tunnel that we have from many, many, many episodes ago. And now I'm going to smooth this out, return this to the way it used to be on both sides. And now I wanna see what it's gonna to take to pop this underground. We'll go out 20 meters again, page down one time. I want this to be level, so that's three notches down. And now it looks pretty good. We'll do the exact same thing over here. 20 units out, one, two, three, exactly the same. And now the trick is gonna be getting this underneath the hill and remaining relatively flat. And here's what I mean. The closer I get to the tunnel, the higher it is. The further I get away from the start of the tunnel, the lower this gets. I think what I'm gonna do is actually overshoot the tunnel just to get the height that I want. And then I will back this up. So I'll again pop underground, delete this back, and then we'll use our curved road tool again. Grab onto this, find our other road. You know you're there because the line lights up nicely. Click, and there we go. And now I think that this tunnel is gonna be, yeah, that is a nice smooth tunnel. Maybe a little bit janky right here, but I think I can live with a bit of imperfection. We can't see underground anyway, so we, uh, we've we done all right. I'm gonna convert this, and this is gonna be a controversial move because I'm basically preventing all pedestrian traffic from walking over, and that's the point. <laughs> I do not want pedestrian activity on this road. I may convert this. I wanna have parks on either entryway, so let's take this and we'll make this a nice tree-lined road. And then this is kind of a part of the next section, but I feel like we have to do it. And that is we're gonna build our frontage road. This is gonna be our pedestrian road because I want to get our subway system going. So basically, we're coming two units back on either side with our frontage pedestrian road. And this will be our main plaza. And I want there to be a little bit of extra space in there. So this is 280 units all the way across. Not too bad. And then coming up, I think we'll do 400. So the whole purpose of building this is so that we can add our metro station. We're going to have some sort of pedestrian plaza right here. Same thing on this side and our hotels surrounding it. But I want to get the metro a little ways away. So you have to walk through a whole bunch of stuff to get to your hotel. Maybe eventually we'll have a shuttle bus, but we want to really maximize the value of this land in between our hotels and our subway station. So now let's get our Metro station in place. So we'll go into our transport menu. We're gonna go into our content creator packs and then filter by railroads of Japan. 
And I've really been interested in this modern metro terminal. I think it's a really attractive station and we're gonna place that right about here. And I'm gonna add this as a reminder to myself. I've got the perfect asset for this location, but we're not gonna worry about that just yet. And now I wanna get the metro over here. So I am gonna ensure that we have our automatic info views on, and then we're gonna lay our metro tracks. So again, we're going over this hill, which is gonna be a bit of a trick. And I do wanna connect this up with that station over there. And it doesn't seem like I got far enough down. It's not letting me make a connection. It's popping back up. So I'm gonna take that back. And what I'll do instead is build half of this over here. So I'm looking for my guideline. We'll pop that on down. And then hopefully use the curved road tool to connect into our existing station. Perfect. And now I'll use the curved road tool to make our last connection. And it's not even giving me a guide. <laughs> Now I'm a little bit nervous It didn't, oh yeah, that is terrible. It's popping up, it's popping down, it's doing all sorts of crazy things. All right, that is better. Totally useless that I did that, but we did it anyway. And I feel happier as a result. Now this line, if we follow it again, this doesn't cross the river, it shoots on over here and then ends up going to a, a variety of places. It, you, you can get over to the Sterling Hills, or you can get to Myrtle Gardens, but we can't get to downtown. So I think that what we'll do is use one of our empty terminals and finally bring this downtown. And there we go. So now we have our tunnel connecting to downtown and our tunnel connecting to basically the rest of the area. We're gonna draw our new lines and what we'll do to begin is just grab this end of line stop and we'll put that over here. And then we'll need to add two new stops here. Not a big deal. And then we're going to come over here and I could extend this line. Let's see where this goes. So this is actually a really short line. It just goes back and forth between the university. So I am going to extend this line rather than creating a new one. And I'm just going to pull this one all the way to over here. And then we'll add stops again. And we'll add our stops to the downtown area as well. We should be good to go. And with that, our regional transportation network is well established and it's time for us to begin working on our local roads. This is going to be the basis of our local roadway network, a grid that is 14 by 20 and then this pedestrian frontage road. We're going to have a number of collectors through here, basically no local roads that aren't pedestrian facilities. And we're going to really conform the roadway network to fit within the buildings that we place. All that said, I've been looking at this and puzzling at what looks off to me, and then I realized this isn't centered. It, okay, this road down the center is centered, but this facility right here is not centered in between this and this. And that was my goal, so we are gonna fix that. Now we do have this in the center, we just need to move this over. So I'm gonna pause this temporarily and delete this. And now we'll move our entire station over and clean up our line. I think that we're far enough away from the station that our lines will not auto repair. So I just had to add one little bit of track here and that was enough to get the stop to move inside the station. So hopefully that saves you some time if you end up in a situation just like this. It's always been a frustration and I didn't realize it was that easy to fix. So now let's build the rest of this network around here. We'll start out again with our dirt roads. And at the end of both of these, what I want to do is have one of our new pedestrian parks. So we've got these awesome small glass roof plazas. And to me, they feel like a statement piece, an announcement that you're coming into a very important and special place. But I do not want this road here that is going to get in the way. So we'll get rid of that and then we'll place this right at the end here. And this does not terraform well, so I just want to make sure it's perfect. Looks amazing. So this will be the edge of our district and I'm placing this right away because I'm very keen to get this portion right. So we're going to extend one beyond on either side here. Then I'm going to go back, say 10 units, and then I'm drawing that connection so I get another node and I can delete this. And then I want to round the edge. So I'm going to basically turn off everything except for road length and angle. And then I'll go out three tiles and pull this in. And now I'm envisioning where this is and basically trying to find the exact middle of this line. And if you've done it right, you're, uh, these are going to look exactly the same, your, your zoning area. 
That is exactly what I was hoping for. We're going to do the exact same thing down here. There we go. We're already looking good. Now we are going to take this. So this is one part of our plaza. I want this to be a bit of a tourist trap. So we're going to add our first unique building into the mix. And I want to add this pedestrian street market hall. And I just love the way that this asset looks. It really fits well into this area. The only thing that I don't like about it is it chooses the pedestrian road that you're going to use. So I believe that this is our standard sandstone. And because it is a sandstone, we're going to probably use that. If we were to go with a cobble, for instance, look at that. That is terrible. <laughs> we're not doing that. And now folks will be able to come from here and walk right on through here to get to our hotels, which are going to be right over here. This will again be 400 up, 280 over, and we might change this. We are going to try one quick thing. So I know the hotels that I want to fit here, and I want them to fit really nicely. The first one is going to be the deluxe hotel, and I want there to be a few units of separation on either side. And I can already tell that this is not going to be a deep enough block here, but it, no, no, it's not going to be because I want to have the three units of separation on either side. So we'll pull this up. And again, we're building this so that it fits the building and not the other way around. And I'm going to give five units of separation here. I want a pedestrian path here and then some buildings right in front of it. There we go. So now we just need to mirror the exact same thing on the other side. Lovely. Now, looking at this, I have one more thought. We're going to place one more hotel here, and I want to give that three units of separation again. This is a very special part of this area, so I think it's okay that we maybe break some of the rules that we're setting on the other side. And in this spot, I want to put the design hotel. And I want to make sure that this is centered. It looks like we're one unit off. That is perfectly centered. Looks so good right there. We're going to have a really nice park right here in a plaza, and there's going to be a little something weird in this area. We are going to have pedestrian facilities right here. We're also going to have pedestrian facilities in the center, but we're going to have a road that basically ends right here. We don't want this to be a through street. This will be very pedestrianized through here, but we're going to cross that bridge in a moment because I do want to finish the rest of our roadway network through here. And this is an important part. So what we're going to do here is basically add our main key monuments in here. So we're going to come down at a 45 degree angle here. This road's going to be the road that actually holds our monument. And then we'll get rid of both of those. These roads may come down further, but these monuments are going to basically announce this place to the world. So we'll add these two right now. The first one's the Statue of Liberty. We're going to do the exact same thing with the Eiffel Tower. So it's interesting. I didn't have the Eiffel Tower unlocked. Uh, so I did unlock this and it was a real pain in the butt <laughs> being completely honest with you. This is a scene from this. I had to basically build gigantic industrial districts all over the place and I ran out of notes. And it's just kind of a reminder to me that we are going to be at our node limit soon. And if we hit that, I have a way to extend this series. So uh, what we were, we are going to keep moving. We're not going to let it just die on the vine like that. And that was a really lengthy process there. I noticed that these weren't exactly the same. And that is something that I want to strive for in this entire area is that sort of balance. And without that balance, I was going to go crazy. So I just kept rebuilding this until I got that balance. But I'm pretty pleased with the result. And basically, you'll come into this area and it's just going to feel grand. And I actually may, may even want to switch these. Let me know in the comments. You think I should leave them like this or switch sides? It kind of feels off balance somehow. Maybe it'll feel better once we add the rest of these in. But the nice thing is these pads are the same, so we could reasonably switch these. Now I'm going to build behind this. And it's going to be important that we get this part of the roadway network done for a couple of reasons. First of all, we are going to have some zoned facilities around here. And secondly, we are going to be alternating between collector one-way couplets and our pedestrian facilities. And this will be a way that we can easily accomplish that by building this part of our roadway network out right up front. And there we go. This is about the extent of what we'll build today. Maybe we'll go a, a couple more blocks up, but not much more than that. 
In fact, I figure we'll probably go up here. I want to have a city services complex. But before we go any further, I do want to get water and power to this location. I feel like there's already enough here that some people may want to visit. So let's put some water pipes underneath the road right where they belong. And then we'll also bring some power to the site. This one's going to be a bit trickier, but I do think that we can just run it up here. This is going to be a temporary line. We can't leave it like this. And there we go. Our water connection has been established. There's one more thing I think we need to focus on over here, and that is we're going to need some city services. We're really far from basically everything over here. So I know that I'm going to be building a theater over here and then a little city services complex over here with fire, healthcare coverage and police coverage. You can't have this many hotels and attractions without it. Let's go ahead and we're going to build the theater. I've given a bit of separation around here. I want to generously landscape everything in this area to give it that Vegas feel, which is why you might be wondering why I'm separating all these buildings so much in what is kind of a high density area. This this is why. And then, you know, I think we're going to hold off on the city services for just a moment. I'm going to add this temporary power line and we'll build out just a bit more of our roadway network. I want to finish this off. So I am going to run this right here. It'll give us kind of an interesting corner. And the really fun thing is that, that we're going to see that exact same thing mirrored on the opposite side because we've done this. And that's exactly what we're going for. That symmetry feels really good in an area like this. And last but not least, we need to formalize what streets are going to be our collector couplets and which are going to be our pedestrian facilities. So I'm going to begin with the pedestrian facilities. We will add trees to some of these, but we'll do that at the very end when we start to think about our landscaping. And I know right off the bat that I want this right here, these frontage roads. These are pedestrian roads. And the roads that we have right here, these are also pedestrian facilities. So if you want to access these lovely amenities from the front, you will walk there. And now let's switch gears and come to our one ways. We're going to go with a three lane one way road, probably overkill, but I do think that it's what we're looking for in this area. We'll have one right here. We'll have that going in this direction. We want this to feel balanced. And the same thing here, and I am inclined to just run this couplet all the way to the road that we know is kind of the end of this. And we'll make this a collector that connects all the way to the highway. And we'll do the exact same thing on both sides. This will be a very important road. It will stop though, because we've got, we've got an interesting conundrum right here. I want to provide access to this parking facility. Now here's my fear. I'm gonna go through and add this pedestrian road and then I'll upgrade this and yeah, now it's ending at the wrong location. So I've got a solution. I'm going to upgrade those as well. And then I think right here is where my pedestrian road actually needs to be on both sides. And I'm just maintaining access to that parking facility. Now we'll upgrade this. There we go. That is exactly what I wanted. These roads terminate at the end. And obviously it looks pretty weird having that extra little curb and sidewalk to drive over. But that's a vanilla limitation. We can live with that. And now we need to provide some way to get to this. I think we'll have a pedestrian road right through here. And I want to have a park up here. We'll get to that a little bit later. We'll convert this to be a pedestrian facility. And I might even add one down the center. I think that could be a nice fit. And we are going to have another driving road right here. I don't want to overdo it. So I think we'll just go with a road with a wide sidewalk. And that's going to kind of be our default here is roads with wide sidewalks. And this is not going to be our main collector couplet over here. That's going to kind of be reserved for the center area. So I am going to have another couplet. We're going to reverse the direction again here. And the interesting thing is this will actually be a through. It'll go all the way down. Ideally, <laughs> apparently the Statue of Liberty has other ideas. Whew. I had to do a whole bunch of work here, basically wiggling the building around. Lots of crazy stuff just to make this work. Thankfully, we got it, but boy, that wasn't necessarily the most fun right there. But what is fun is extending this road here and we'll do the exact same thing on the other side. So again, this is behind the hotel. We're alternating direction. And for this one, I don't think we can go quite as far. So we'll just add this guideline right here. 
and then we can finish off our road. Now for some more pedestrian roads. I think we can get one right here. This is kind of in between two major roads. So having a pedestrian facility to break this up wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And I'll add the, that one right there as well. And then right down the center here, I know without a doubt, I want this to be a pedestrian road. And then I think we'll leave this because we're not gonna add these buildings over here today anyway. This one is going to be an important regular street. This will, we're going to have our city services facility back here, so we can't break that up. And even right here, I think it's it's kind of the same deal. And then we'll let that go for now. And then lastly, we've got a couple of roads back here. And I feel like we've gone really light on the pedestrian roads. <laughs> so we're going to add just a couple through here. These right here, I think we can get away with. We're going to have parking behind this hotel, so we can't get away with it there. And then we'll just finish the rest of these off as well and even though this couplet stops i'm going to extend it on this side and sometimes you'll see that with roads normally it's because the roads used to connect and now they just happen not to this time around it's going to be a design decision and with that i do think we are primed to move on to our parking and our public services the very first public service I want to address is making this a pedestrian area so that we can get rid of our garbage icons. So we need a pedestrian service point and that must be located on one of these roads that you can actually access from a vehicle. So we'll pop into our parks menu and then go under pedestrian areas. And I'm thinking we're gonna just grab a large pedestrian area service point. I think this will be enough. And I'm contemplating placing this way out here. So the idea being that this will be close enough that we can cover most of the areas over here, but it'll be kind of secluded. And then we'll spread our service point from this area. And this is going to be a gigantic pedestrian area. And there we go. We have a gigantic pedestrian area, Butler Street. This thing should be ridiculously expensive. 13,911 per week. Yeah, that's pretty expensive. <laughs> so it'll be fine. I just really want this whole area to function well. And I think setting a big pedestrian area on here is going to do the trick for us. While we're here, I also want to set the building theme. And because this is fairly modern, I want to go with wall to wall buildings throughout this entire area. And I realized something, Palma de Fuego is right on top of Butler Street. And as a result, we're actually applying that to the entirety of Palma de Fuego. So we'll remove that and then we'll shrink this district up. Now, that means that we need a name for our little area right here. So if you've got the perfect name, think of something that the Myrtle Lopez's might want to honor. Drop it down in the comments and in the next episode, we'll pick a name. Now we can move on to some of our more traditional city services and our parking. And I think we're going to start out right in this area and I'm going to add a parking lot right alongside here. We'll have a firehouse, police department, and probably a hospital as well. So we'll add a parking lot right here, like I mentioned, and we're going to go great for the high capacity, everything in this area, basically. And then we'll run a road right up here, add the firehouse right there. And then I want a high capacity police station as well. And we can really orient this towards any of these roads. I'm going to face it this way so that we're not dumping traffic onto this collector. And then back here, we are going to have our high capacity hospital. So I'm going to remove that. I'm, I'm hoping that this will fit back here. I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to need to go back a little ways. Yeah, that is perfect. There we go. So this is a nice little campus. And we're going to we're going to finish this off with some pedestrian facilities. I really want this to fit nicely, so I'm going to get rid of road guidelines, and then I should be able to run a pedestrian facility right there, and we'll run another one right here, and then we'll add a couple of small parking lots. Perfect. This feels like a, a cohesive little campus. And now let's place a couple of parks. And I'm curious, if we look at our land values, it's pretty low. I'm surprised because we do have these really important facilities. Oh, they are mad at me. No garbage service point. That makes me realize I never added power to this area or water to the service point. So those would still be issues. <laughs> so we'll get those connected. And in fact, temporarily, I'm going to even add a power line back here. And now our metro will at least function. So that is something. That's something. 
So now we can finally add those parks and I've got a couple of ideas. We now have our treasure hunt parks and I think it'd be really fun to add this plaza of the future. It looks like we have to build our countdown clock. And if you haven't seen this yet, it's a fun asset. So basically it's a gigantic clock. And when you place it, it tells you when City Skylines 2 is gonna come out. <laughs> so I wanna know if you think I should add this to the build or not. I, I placed it there temporarily just so that I could grab this building. And I wanna place that in the center here. And oh, it's not it's not lining up the way I'd hoped. I'd hoped that this would be right in the center, but instead we've got one tile on one side and two on the other. Thankfully, Biffa showed us a trick and I wanna utilize it. So we know that our road is right here, which means that our center point is right there. I'm gonna go two units up here and two units up here, and then use my curved road tool, find this line here and just curve this over. And the purpose of all of that is to have this little loop here, because when we have that loop, we're able to slide this along. So I am super impressed with that trick. That is an awesome one. Thank you to Biffa. And I wanna say Biffa said that he got it from someone in his Discord. And that is an absolutely phenomenal tip right there. Look at that, right in the center. We are gonna use that one all the time. I know it's a lot more complicated than using Move It, but I'm just glad we have a solution. Next, we're gonna add a couple of our new tourism and leisure parks. And I, I wanna add the tourist park. I think that that would fit really nicely right here. We can add one on either side. Actually, let's focus these towards the pedestrian area. So it seems like this is a place you go in the center here to kind of get away from those roads. And I'm almost thinking that we should extend this road all the way through. Yeah, I like that a lot. So now folks could walk straight through here if they wanted to. And the nice thing about this is we have three variations and I love this variation. I don't like this one at all. I think this is variation two. It is. <laughs> I don't like variation two. I like one, which is what we have over here, and three, which is kind of the flea market look. So we'll go with that right there. And then in this area, I want to make a custom park, completely custom. So I will get this prepped. I'm adding this right in the center simply so that folks will walk through here. We're gonna use decals all over this to cover this up. And my favorite decal is the zoo tiles. So we're gonna go with that one. And I'm gonna take a quick beat here because I want to add some fountains in the center here. And if I get too far along, I will lose track of where the center is and really struggle to make this correct. And I finally have a use for this universal search. <laughs> We're gonna use it right here. Now, because I have the paths, I can't place this. So what I think I'm gonna do instead is grab some of these smaller fountains and place them in the edges. And then around the outside, I wanna place a couple of these as well. And then we can finish off our decaling. And I find that there are very few things in city skylines that require boatloads of patience, but this is one of them. <laughs> so I did have to remove these fountains and replace them. They got in the way of the decals and decals are always a little bit finicky to work with, particularly if you want to do things like I just did adding that pedestrian facility underneath the decal. If you're going to do that, you're going to run into some issues and you just got to be prepared to breathe. <laughs> Maybe that's the right way of putting it. All right, and I know that this isn't a proper park. It is something more custom, something that you could maybe even consider landscaping. But I think that this is so important to this area that I just had to take care of it now. And truthfully, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. I do think it's be a, a really special place. You could exit the hotel, grab a quick ice cream cone, and then be on your way to head back to downtown Verde Beach. But I do want to add a couple more parks through here, particularly in this area. We're going to add a couple more of our tourism parks. And we've got these awesome sidewalk cafes now. We'll add one right here and one right here. And they're the exact same kind. And truthfully, I'm not okay with that. So we're going to change this to variation three, which at least feels modern, just like variation one. Variation two kind of has that old school Chicago or New York look. And I just don't think it fits in Verde Beach. So another reason why I probably will never use the Brooklyn Queens content creator pack in Verde Beach. It just doesn't fit. There we go. And then we've got to add some water through here. We've got our new ponds. So we'll add one right here. And I think we'll add another right there. We will definitely figure out how this fits in a bit down the line. 
but at least we have it placed for now. And then we are gonna have a couple of our sidewalk restaurants. And I think it might be nice to have those closer to uh, this area. So what we're gonna do is add one right here near the Eiffel Tower and another right here near the Statue of Liberty. So now if you were over here, you could come and grab a bite to eat. And again, we don't want variation one. We'll go with variation two and three. The very last thing we're gonna add through here is everyone's favorite amenity. We're gonna add a dog park. And we're adding this because we know that we're gonna have a bunch of residential back here and those residents will likely have dogs and they'll wanna walk those dogs. And speaking of those residents, let's add a bit of zoning to this area. Now here's where, at least on this side, we are able to jump power to a couple of these locations that are a bit far flung right now. So the very first concern that we have is ensuring that things like our deluxe hotel can level up at least as, as high as they can. I don't think we're gonna be able to max them out and I'm gonna be okay with it because I don't really love the way the mechanic forces you to build just basically in the middle of the densest part of your town. I get it, that is an approach. <laughs> it's just not the one I'm gonna take. I'm sending a pedestrian facility back here all the way around. These tiles right here are where we're gonna try to meet that requirement. And I'm gonna mirror this same pedestrian pattern on the other hotel as well. And then we'll add a couple of pedestrian facilities on our other hotel over here. Now, I forgot to add one thing in the previous section. I did wanna have parking behind this, and I even mentioned that. So let's add that. Now this is going to limit the amount of space that we have available to actually add zoning through here. So that is a consideration. So we should think about a strategy for actually getting these to fit. This, our biggest need is office. Shopping, it's a need, but it's not nearly as significant. And for this, shopping is the number one need. So I think what we're gonna do is add some of our shopping right here. We'll add strictly offices behind. And I'm wondering if I add a bit of commercial right here, perhaps I can get away with something like that. There we go. So we've got a bit of zoning through here. And as much as I would love this to auto fill in, we don't have a huge demand for offices right now. So unless we resolve some of our residential demand, we are going to struggle to get these offices to grow in. And truthfully, I don't think that this is a problem to add some residential back here each of these buildings would have workers and those workers do need places to live. So we'll add some high density residential right here. This is also going to mean that we need to add at least one elementary school and a high school. We are going to add some of our high capacity schools. We'll, we'll fit that, that building theme anyway. So we'll go with an elementary school right over here and we'll add our high capacity high school to the other side. And I think I might extend this block, another block back. And then we'll just make this one work. And to do that, we'll go into our freeform tool, kind of just curve this over, and then we'll use a curved road tool to finish this off. And the main reason I even cared about that is you can see that we've got a bit of terrain here. We're gonna add some residential through here, and then we'll have to add some more water pipes. And there we go. I think that's about the extent of what we're gonna zone in. So I'm gonna let this run for a minute and we'll watch this fill in. And I've let this go for a while and the office is just not really growing in. So that's gonna be something that we just have to wait on as we build this area out. I have a sneaking suspicion that we're gonna need much more residential here before this office becomes viable at all. Yeah, I guess we got a couple of buildings, but not enough that we, oh, oh they're hiding back here. Okay, so we did get a few. So we'll look at this and it's almost happy, almost happy. It's actually not happy about its shopping availability. And perhaps we should have water in all of these locations. <laughs> Apparently that's not quite enough to make the this building happy. Now I really am reluctant to add a ton right here, but I think I can get away with adding one more commercial building here and one more right here. Hopefully that meets the need. Otherwise our other solution would be to actually dezone some of this office i just truthfully this is the problem i have with the amount of everything that it's asking for and the proximity how narrow the, the window is of the proximity i just i don't know that there's a way that i can actually get this much higher that said we're at least making money same thing here and here we're losing a bunch of money but that's because the zoning hasn't filled in all that said i'm fairly satisfied with this and I think maybe we just move on to our landscaping. 
We've obviously got a lot to the landscape, but the very first place I want to start is upgrading some of these roads where we could add trees right in the road. And uh, for all of the roads that carry vehicular traffic, we're not going to do much there. But for these pedestrian roads, we're going to add some palm trees in the medians, for instance, where it makes some sense to do so. Now, here's one of the funny things where you have extra nodes, you can immediately tell because these divide up very poorly. So I'm going to, knowing how close we are to our node limit, get rid of some stuff like that and just get it fixed. Normally, I wouldn't be that picky, but I think we have to be now. And then on some of these side streets, I think we're going to make this appear to be a local road by having the trees in the side. Whenever I see this, I just kind of associate this with a normal residential street. And I kind of like it in this area. Make it feel like a place where you might see a local resident drive through, a Wooner for something of that nature. Where obviously we can't do that in game. I really hope that we see Woonerfs in City Skylines too. It seems like the sort of thing that we should see. <laughs> so we'll have to see. And there's a lot of C's right there. <laughs> and now that we've got those roads selected, I'm going to come through on all of these. And I think I want to go with the generic date palm for the center of these roads. And then the roads with trees in the side, we're going to have some of our tall California palms. And then for our main collector going all the way through here, we are going to use some of these smaller California palms. Are these the young California palms? Yes, the young California young palm. And honestly, the main reason we're doing that is they fit underneath our little parks that we have right here. So to me, that's a good call. And all the way along here, I want to control. We're going to have fences. We don't want people walking through our grassy area. So we are going to add the fences all the way through. was a lot of landscaping. I'm not sure if you've ever had this happen, but sometimes when I play City Skylines, I kind of slip into a trance and end up doing way more than I expected I to do. And that's what happened with this landscaping. Initially, I was just going to change the roads and then I just I just got into it. <laughs> so here we go. I've landscaped everything generously and I want this to feel very lush. Like there's a lot going on here and like this, someone really cares about this. So we've got a little bit more to do, but I need to let my fingers rest for a minute. So we're going to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour.
I'm not going to lie. I'm really starting to like this place. I think it really feels like something is happening here. You see all the pedestrian activity. And you got to remember, we are not even halfway full. We're maybe a quarter of the way done with this place. And there's still just a ton of tourism activity. All that said, there are a couple of things that we need to take a look at. I'm a bit concerned that we haven't adjusted our traffic through here, our traffic signals. So we've just got signalized intersections everywhere. It's not doing anything to our traffic flow, but it is a problem. So let's adjust our junctions. And what I'm thinking is that we are going to stop these roads that are coming through. So where we have these, we're not going to signalize them. I want to signalize the pedestrian roads. So we'll allow through movement on the roads that intersect with our one ways and all the rest get stops. So the pedestrians have an interval to get through works for me. And then the other big concern that I have is right here are different train lines here. We didn't adjust anything. So let's take a look at both of those. We have government de fuego and holy cow, <laughs> we've got 20 trains, which is likely causing more issues than it's benefiting us. I'm just going to switch this to this new railroads of Japan, 660 capacity train, and then we'll take it down to 100%, which I think will be six vehicles, maybe five. And that seems much more reasonable. Our other line is this Myrtle Gardens line, and this has the S-Bahn. And from what I can tell, the five trains are overkill for this. I think we're going to take this one down to maybe three trains and then have these a bit more full. And the really nice thing about this is then we won't have a ton of queuing right here. So initially after we place this, I noticed a ton of trains queuing and we want to avoid that if we can. So I'm going to let this run for a minute because I want to see how much more ridership we can see on these couple of lines. And right now we've got 204 on the government de fuego and 233 on Myrtle Gardens. We'll let this run for a minute and see what happens. And after letting this run for a considerable amount of time, we're seeing additional passenger activity here. You know, maybe 50 or 60 additional passengers. Nothing huge, but still, I'm happy to see it. I did adjust the lines a little bit, and I took down the number of trains on both of these lines. And on the Myrtle Gardens line, I've switched it up so that we had the high capacity Metro. We were seeing pass ups, and I would much rather have everyone get picked up on our highest capacity form of transit than to see pass ups occurring. So feeling very good about the direction that we're heading in. And then as an added bonus, look at our population. We have uh, rebounded. We started a little bit less than this at the start of the episode, but we are making our way back towards 200,000 in our march towards 200,000. And I'm really, really excited about that. And I hope that you've enjoyed this one. We've accomplished a lot and we've got even more to do in this area. If you liked it, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I want to take a moment to thank you for your time. There's a thousand things you could be doing today, but you decided to take a bit of time to hang out with me. And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.